Oh, I'm just having a good time with my guests already. But uh, Karibuni back to Full Circle with Joyce. And um, we're getting ready to talk about uh, our main just topic of discussion for the day, which is men, women and money and how the sexes differ with their finances. But just before we do, I want to point us to a couple other interesting topics here today. Number one, there's a story about how Kenya uh, would like to borrow 300 billion shillings to build a Nairobi Mombasa road. And let me just uh, get to that story for you and read out just a little bit of context, okay? Um, should Kenya borrow 300 billion shillings to build a new Nairobi Mombasa road? Someone here says, if the government uh, intends to help us build the expressway, we should grab the opportunity. However, it should help us construct the road without giving us conditions. There have been many projects the U.S. has funded in Kenya directly through government or other organizations like, the U like USAID. If the U.S. is serious about helping Kenyans, it should do so without issuing sanctions in regard regard to what the government is doing now this of course is just getting people's viewpoints as far as this discussion um, someone else says we should not borrow 300 billion shillings from the US to build the planned expressway because our public debt is way high and more loans would only oppress the taxpayers currently our debt stands at more than at six billion or six trillion rather more than three times our budget so if we borrow the 300 billion we will have a lot of pressure in terms of public debt and when that happens the government will move to increase taxes on basic commodities to raise revenue to settle the debts now i'm going to ask you guys the same question uh, so again this is just some background that uh, the u.s might be able to give kenya a loan um, to build an expressway from mm. Nairobi to Mombasa. First question, is it even necessary to have that expressway? Because you have to wonder, we already have a highway. Secondly, we now have SGR, which we already spent a lot of money on. Mm. So what's what's you guys' take? Sharon, we can begin with you. Yeah. Um, I'd say it's always nice to to build new expressways, highways. It's great to, uh, to move, to evolve as a country. The only issue I have with borrowing money, like you said, is the impact it will have on our taxes, on our, on our future as a country. I feel like as a government, we should be focusing more on increasing our revenue rather than creating more debt, mm -hmm. yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because right now we're just, honestly, we've, how many loans have we taken in, sure. in this past year? Sure. Yeah. And just to uh, introduce my guest to you all, this is Sharon Kate Nganga, who's an economist and a statistician, and she's also a TV presenter uh, elsewhere. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> I have David Cairo, who's a financial advisor and the CEO of Elimu Stawi. Karibuni tana to both of you uh, to the show. David, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, borrowing in business for me is good, as long as then you've done the feasibility and, mm -hmm. uh, and you're very sure about the productivity. So for me, I would look at the, how good or bad it is. For me, it's based on the outcome. What are we projecting it for? Mm -hmm. So if the need, the outcome uh, uh, is, is, you know, is to grow and to spur jobs and create jobs and to make the place more productive, then I'm okay with that. But mm -hmm. the challenge now we find is most of us are blind to that information. We don't have access to that right. information. Isn't so, SGR supposed to be uh, doing that though? That's what I'm saying. We don't have access to the information of what, what is that informed mm -hmm. all this. We, we see the results, people will use it, mm -hmm. but we don't understand exactly how we arrive at this decision. So you mm -hmm. find even when we have this conversation, it becomes very difficult to appreciate uh, mm -hmm. what went into uh, investing. However, I feel the debt level is very high in this mm -hmm. country. So yeah. that, if you ask me, would, uh, we would then need to understand what is it that we are looking at to ensure that we don't get to a place where it goes out of hand. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, to another story now. Facebook rolls out a news tab to boost journalism. Huh. Um, Facebook is rolling out a news tab and promises to focus on, I quote, high quality journalism. Uh, on Friday, they started rolling out this uh, devoted news tab with professionally produced content material. Um, and uh, the, the social media platform says that this is to guy, uh, just prevent, I guess, misinformation as well. But the tab uh, being examined by some U.S. customers shall be separate 
from a consumer's regular feed and embrace articles from associate information organizations, uh, making a transparent dis distinction between journalism and tales shared by customers from a variety of sources. Mark Zuckerberg was quoted as saying, this is going to be the first time ever there will be a dedicated space on the app that is focused on high quality journalism. Um, and the combo of tales in Facebook information shall be decided by algorithmic personalization based mostly on a consumer's preferences and knowledge with journalists selecting among the tales. What do you guys think of this? We were just talking about um, social media and yeah. our private information last week. And here he's clearly saying it's going to follow what you guys do and what you read and study mm -hmm. about and sort of your preferences and then, I guess, curate stories for you. Do you think this is a good move as far as, you know, trying to control the sort of mm -hmm. quality journalism? I like how they're saying, you know, that it's not just <laughs> consumers' tales. Because, Maze, I think Kenyans would, <laughs> we would shine on that list. <laughs> I, I personally love it. I'm a millennial. I'm always on social media. I... I hardly ever watch news, so if I'm gonna get any sort of information, it's either on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. So I think it's it's a great move to have them actually have curated stories that are based on actual facts than yeah. going on KOT and realizing, ah, 10 days later, that story wasn't true. Even so if they're following your preferences to curate those stories. I also, I feel like, I like the idea of following my preferences because sometimes, like if you're on Instagram and Twitter, sometimes you'll see things and you're like, "Why oh, am I seeing this ad? I don't, I don't want to see it. Like, I don't even follow these particular stories." So if they are looking at what I'm liking more and and what I'm following more and curating around that. Millennials, we have such a short concentration span, so stick to like <laughs> what exactly I want. Um, but also the fact that they've separated it creates the, the idea that if you want to learn more outside of your preferences, you can always look for that information. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. David, are you as comfortable as Sharon is? I am not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> to be very honest, I feel they're getting too much information. Yeah. And, uh, but, and, I, and I would understand where they're coming from, from a point of big data, mm -hmm. so they want to be able to have access to all that information. Mm. And for me, then I'm looking at, uh, uh, Facebook is a company, mm -hmm. so with time, it's a, it's, it has a perpetual life. So mm -hmm. it means that the people who are there now don't necessarily have to be there going forward, especially being a public uh, listed company. Mm. Right. So I'm looking at uh, the, the act security of that data. Mm. Today, yes, you're a millennial, but you won't remain a millennial in that sense. You know, I mean, a young millennial yeah. all, all your life. So at the point at which now, 30, 40 years from now, mm -hmm. that information maybe is now being, is, has been curated, it's mm -hmm. on your wall, it's everything. Mm -hmm. We're able to track all that. Maybe your own taste and preferences mm -hmm. or mine, whoever, will keep changing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but at that time, will I still want to be remembered knowing that whatever is on social media will never uh, be erased? Yeah. So that's why for me, we need to be very, very careful with, with them going in that direction. Sure. However, I like the aspect of this. Uh, it's, it's bringing a form of, mm -hmm. uh, 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 I mean, it's, it's really disrupting uh, the media space because that, I'm sure it will. Yeah. That I like because yeah. I, I prefer that in business. Yeah. But then I'm looking at the privacy aspect and I'm thinking there's need for a very good balance mm. uh, between the two. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, um, as we continue with our discussions, let me shout out a few of you who are watching. Mm -hmm. uh, Maxo, Nix, Jones, you say you're watching from Obunga in Kisumu. Please, Nagotea, my aunt Regina Akumu and David Otieno. Brian Ibrahim, you're watching us from Naivasha Kabati. Uh, Baba Idimia Ule Mpole, you're tuned in Ukiwa Ruai, Jackie Mwika tuned in from Makweni, Isaac Washira tuned in from Juja Kamakawa, Willie Atandi uh, tuned in from Kakamega uh, Masinde Muliro University and you're saying you're keeping it locked right here. Jo, um, and Shiks Kaugi as well, is, we say is senior to Kondani. Asante ni sana to all of you. You can keep your feedback coming into double two triple nine. That's our SMS sign. Absolutely free to SMS in. You can also reach us on our social media platforms at Switch TV KE on Instagram and at Switch TV Kenya on Facebook and Twitter. So with that said, let's jump straight into our discussion mm -hmm. uh, for the day, which is on men, women and money and how uh, these two sexes differ with their finances now the differences can be a bit of a touchy subject okay and generally when we talk about men and women <laughs> and money you kind of have to pick your words a little carefully mm -hmm. and so you know how do we i guess look at spending and savings is there a difference in the way men and women perceive them in economics which you've also studied as well you know they'll often talk about how women sometimes make better financial decisions mm -hmm. for their families and that has a trickle down effect to their communities as well gentlemen do you agree <laughs> am i if you're going to be the 
<laughs> the, <laughs> David is here like raising his eyebrows. <laughs> I'm going to get to you in a minute. Yeah. But, um, you know, from the things that uh, men and women spend their money in and what they invest in, there's definitely different approaches to how we look at money, how we perceive money uh, and all of that. And that's what we want to talk about today. Are men or women who is more likely to make uh, financial mistakes? Uh, who is more likely to make better investment decisions? Is there any data or science that supports that? That's going to be what we're talking about. So, David, you were already shaking your head uh, even before I got to the first question. Tell me what was running through your mind. I think what what ran through my mind is uh, uh, um, let me start by saying money is is and should be a tool at, yeah. at all is. Uh, it's only that many times people look at money as the end, mm -hmm. uh, yet it should never be the end. Money is like a key. When you need a key to open a door, that's what money is. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that money should be the end uh, of that. So you find that uh, uh, on the question you talked of, I mean, on the subject you just raised now, you find that not all men or women will handle that. Why I, raised my, why I shook my head is I'm, I'm not sure I can represent all the men in this room. <laughs> so I, in fact, I choose to take a very neutral position today, okay. not to represent any gender, but then to bring out the issues regarding the, uh, our understanding uh, of that. But let me start by saying again, money is a tool. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means that uh, we should not never ever look at money as an end in itself, yeah. but understand money is the tool that helps you achieve the end. Because it doesn't matter how much you amass or how much you don't have, mm -hmm. uh, that's it. It can only help you this far. After this, then what? Yeah. 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 Sharon, do you do you are you also taking a neutral position today? I would like to. Um, I feel like I'm I'm representing so many facts. First, I'm a youth, so I make very different um, decisions when it comes to money in terms of that, um, and also as a woman from my personal experiences. Um, and yeah, just getting to know a lot of my male friends and seeing how I could definitely tell how they make des decisions and I'm like, oh, I'd probably never do that as a woman. Mm. Yeah, so. What are some of those things you'd never do as a woman, at um, least for you? And we're, I mean, we're not generalizing for any <laughs> of the genders here, but. Um, it took experience. a while, it took a while for me to realize I would never really invest as fast as my male counterparts and as easily like as as a young woman i'm always thinking about oh the next day a week from now a month from now or maybe i'm helping my mom or i'm helping my siblings um so whereas i have the money i i might have saved up and i'm like oh i want to invest this there'll always be so many other factors to think about mm -hmm. while my male counterparts will be like oh no i see an opportunity let me jump on it mm -hmm. and if it fails it fails if it doesn't i'll just have to like save up again and Right. and do it again well in my mindset i'm like if i feel that's it i don't help to i don't help anyone i don't help myself and i'll probably not try to invest after that right. so, so you're a lot more risk averse than yes that, than yeah. your male counterpart to be. yeah that's very interesting because later in the show we're actually going to be talking in our second hour we're going to be talking about grabbing opportunities in life and i totally hear you because yeah. you know i really want to analyze everything <laughs> and sometimes by the time you finish your analysis <laughs> opportunity yeah. but we're going to be continuing this discussion i need to take a short break right now uh, but Sharon and David will be back with me after the break keep your questions coming into double two triple nine All right, guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. And thank you for those of you who are engaging with me this morning. I do appreciate your company. Bernice Nyambura, you says, who says, Akizi uh, Madenizi Mezidi, I think it's too much. That's following the story about um, Kenya borrowing some more money for uh, a, a new expressway from Nairobi to Mombasa. Uh, someone else says, good morning, Joyce. Isaac Kwashira, glad to see you on screen as usual following the show from Juja. Uh, someone here says, Joyce, you don't leave me your name or where you're watching from, but you just say, hey, Joyce, I think women are financially stable full stop <laughs> that's just it okay um uh hey joyce tuned in to switch tv from at the river my weekend was really great favor upon favor and ready for what you have for us today that's daniel omusila your super fan well thank you very much daniel i do appreciate that and uh you know what guys it's kcpe this week so uh someone here says good morning joyce tuned in from nakuru my weekend was blessed i thank god for that please help me wish my nephew olango cigar success 
in his KCPE exam. I know they're doing rehearsals today. God bless all our dear KCPE candidates. And in fact, you know what, you guys? Uh, later on, I'll be giving you an opportunity to send me uh, names and I'd be happy to give them some shout outs and we're going to see what we can do for them during the week as well. I'll be touching on some Facebook comments too a bit later. But let me bring back my guests uh, into uh, the discussion here. Just before we went on break, Sharon was telling us her uh, experience of being a young woman um, who in comparison to her male colleagues and counterparts will be much less uh, reserved about mm -hmm. investing in different things and i totally hear you and if there are other women out there like that who can resonate with what she's saying do let me know um but david what, what do you think about that does that resonate for you do you see that as a common thing it is it is very common and the reason is uh, if you allow me to mention you would consider ladies or ladies are considered more emotional than men mm. And uh, the challenge with money is you should never be emotional about money. Never. Mm -hmm. In fact, you'll realize uh, for any one of us, anywhere you lose money, lose, and I use the word lose literally, is where you bring in emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So any time you bring emotions to a subject, to any, to any conversation, then you've lost money. Right. Now, the challenge then is with, with, the, with, you find that with most women, they'll be emotional around it and they'll be like, if I spend on this, I am not sure it will come back. So they want an assurance. Mm. You know, there's, there's need to be assured that, this find, that w whatever I'm doing, I'll get it back. Mm -hmm. But you see, in investments, stroke business, and, and risk, in a risk, you, you, you're, you're taking an action w without a certain known future. Mm -hmm. That means, and, and the challenge is that if that situation happens, you stand to lose financially, mm -hmm. then that's the risk. Mm -hmm. But you say, so you find many men will not attach emotions to, this, to the project, mm -hmm. so they'll jump into it. Mm. And uh, some of them are in unison, so they'll team up two, three, four guys, mm -hmm. five guys, and do the thing. Yeah. But with ladies, by the time a lady first convinces herself, before she can even convince another lady, mm -hmm. that already takes time. Then, as you said, I think when you were at the break, which is true, by the time uh, you, know, you come around the point, you know, <laughs> the idea of doing this thing, the opportunity has already gone. gone. Yeah. So I think it's just an issue. But I'm not saying men are not emotional. Men, men also become very emotional. I'll give an example. If yeah, you're, if you're you're you all buy cars <laughs> like as if you're buying tomatoes uh, and shoes. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was even going to use a very, maybe um, those are two, a bit too expensive. Think of even, you just sit with a man on a public transport, even now Uber or something. Mm -hmm. he's, yeah. He'll want to pay. Mm. That's an he or she is already attaching an emotion. He's already attaching an emotion to right. that experience. Mm -hmm. And in yeah. the process, money goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, before I move away from that particular uh, uh, um, angle there is, I guess sometimes it's easy to say that when, and maybe it would, it would work between the sexes that we might be risk averse. But I'm just wondering for the many youth in this country who are unemployed and are struggling to make ends meet, mm -hmm. right? And you don't have... Like literally, the risk of mm -hmm. trying to risk mm -hmm. an investment is, mm -hmm. is, is just too big a cost. Mm -hmm. What does one do in that situation? Because, yeah, you're right that no risk, high risk, high reward, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, how does a young person position themselves, you know, to be able to win big with mm -hmm. investments when they are knowing like this could literally be yeah. their last mm -hmm. coin? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I, I'm, I believe strongly that the last thing you need to start a business, the last, and I've said it before, not on this show, but here at Switch TV, mm. is money. True. And, and that's the, fa the, la the, the first thing many youth don't have access mm -hmm. to. They don't own capital, so many, many in terms of money, in terms of assets, to a large extent. Mm -hmm. But the last, thing, the you last thing you need to start a business is money. Is money. money. Hmm. What we need first is your idea, mm -hmm. and you crystallize that idea. You understand, you appreciate, what is it that I want to do? How do I want to do it? With who, when, all those details. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many people out there who have money, but they don't know what to do with mm -hmm. it. Sure. So you find, uh, my personal take is the way God has made us. Mm -hmm. People with money don't have ideas, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. That's where we need each other, okay? Mm -hmm. So you find, don't foc the, the, let them not focus too much on where, is the, where am I getting money to do this business? Mm. It's better to focus first on what is the business that I want to do, mm -hmm. how do I want to do it, with who, how, when, all those details. Mm -hmm. When those details are clear, you will be shocked that there's so much money out there waiting for you to do this business. Mm. Yeah. So I would say money is never a hindrance. 
to start a business. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sharon, you know, as a young person too, do you kind of have the same sentiments? I actually do. I totally agree on that. Um, so, and even with my friends in university, so I'm about to graduate, um, we have found our way to just think, ar think around the idea try come up with ideas that don't have money tagged to it because the problem is you're constantly thinking about oh i need ten thousand i need fifty thousand i need a hundred thousand but what if the money doesn't come does that mean that your idea dies out mm -hmm. so i totally agree with the mm -hmm. fact that you should never have um, money at the forefront of it mm. if the money comes cool if it doesn't that's fine okay. um, but I think the issue with most young people is that we don't have information on how to handle money sure yeah so and it, it's even a personal experience I had to go through um, a program called Centonomy 101 to really understand what money is why it's a, a commodity why it's a need how you can use it as an asset and and why it's important to just know how to handle it and it made me realize like even at home you never really understood why your mom t tells you to go to the kiosk with a certain amount and mm -hmm. expects you to come back with a certain amount just think it's something you're meant to do spend and bring back um, some certain amounts right but no one tells you that this is how you should handle it this is how you can multiply it this is how you should um, you should avert loans and if you do get into a loan to grow your mm -hmm. assets how can you pay it back um, so I think it's mostly about an education Laps, okay. we don't really understand what to do with money and how to make it. Okay. Um, but yes, always have the money at the back end and not at the forefront. All right. Yeah. Well, let me touch on some Facebook comments here. Willie Atandi says, uh, and we're get, getting back into savings with this. But uh, Willie Atandi says, women spend. Women spend more than men, mm -hmm. and you find that women's consumption in terms of money usage is higher than that of men. <laughs> and you're watching us from Kakamega at Masinde Muliro University. Irene Kendi says, I think women are more cautious when it comes to money because men see it as an opportunity before even thinking they jump on it and repercussions, <laughs> repercussions follow later. And uh, <laughs> let's talk about uh, spending yes. then. <laughs> I actually Shara, agree with yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> I actually agree with you. You do? I that do. women Why? spend more? I honestly feel like women, and I'm saying this from personal experience, um, I think women spend more. Um, if you think about, if I was just to calculate how many hair products I'm using on my natural hair, what I'm wearing, my shoes. Um, and then on top of that, you're also thinking about the community. You're thinking, oh, I need to put aside this for someone. I need to put aside this for this, you know. Um, I definitely feel like men are more are more simple when it right. comes to, you know, going to the barber is not as expensive as buying six different hair products. Um, mm -hmm. They'll stick to um, three good sh three good shirts, um, two good um, trousers, and you'll even see even when, when we go out for lunch, they might spend more because they want to accommodate you, and that's where the emotional part comes in. Mm. But if they're alone with the boys, they'd rather go to a kiosk. Mm. Yeah, why? Yeah. Why go to a fancy Instagrammable right. <laughs> hotel, right? right? But if the girl comes in, then maybe I can spend on that. But they do plan on that. Um, but I definitely feel like I spend more than my brother. Okay, yeah. <laughs> David. When when it when it comes to spending, and yes. you, you know when you're advising clients, yes. what are some of the biggest tips that you would share with them? Because here we have confessions already. <laughs> <laughs> Haircare, so. yes, shoes. Yes, yes. So, but, but but just before I answer, to to find to finish on her point yeah. uh, in agreement is Maisha Mwanoma Sirazi. So really, <laughs> the Kibanda thing and everything right. makes yeah. sense. But but what I advise my clients is where I started off from. Uh, the, not to put emotions to money. Mm -hmm. You should never be emotional uh, with money. Even don't be emotional on money itself. Money, money doesn't know you're spending it. Mm. It's not alive. It, mm. it doesn't know what you're doing. So don't at attach emotions to it because the moment you do, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, you lose. Number two, mm -hmm. uh, in any transaction in life, any transaction, you're either a producer, that means you earn, or you are a consumer, that right. means you spend mm -hmm. in, yeah. any con in any transaction. So... Always ask yourself, in this transaction, am I the one who is earning or am I the one who is giving? Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand it from the point of earning, mm -hmm. receiving, or giving stroke, losing. You've lost it. Mm -hmm. when, even though you've gotten the hair products, that money has gone yeah. in exchange for. 
So yeah. what then I'll always encourage all of us, irregardless, irrespective, whether it's pocket money, whether it's money you've earned, whether it's what, mm -hmm. whether it's even a gift you've received in form of money, always ask, ask yourself, uh, is it that I'm producing it, mm -hmm. earning it, or is it that I'm consuming? Now, no one will ever fail to be a consumer, mm -hmm. right. but not everyone will be a producer. True. Okay. Everyone is a consumer, not yeah. everyone is a producer. Right. So the question is, as you consume, which means as you remove money from your pocket and give, are you consuming stroke given from a point of receiving right mm. okay so that it's in and out yes not but you just out out, out. yes <laughs> so the what you're now referring to for ladies you find it's more the concern is more on the g giving mm -hmm. i won't even now say consume but it's giving <laughs> giving giving which means losing money yeah. as opposed to my personal opinion yeah. right okay now and the and the challenge is it's it doesn't look like it's expensive you mm -hmm. find the the pass in and i'm saying this you know, uh, in, in general terms, you find maybe the cost of a shoe for a lady and the cost of a shoe for a man, they're not the same price. Mm -hmm. The men will always be slow, very much higher yeah. than that. So the lady thinks, I'm just spending this much on a shoe. Mm. It doesn't look much. Yeah. But without understanding that actually you've lost. Mm. Yeah. So mm. I think that's what influences our So it's a false spend. comparison. It is, yeah. a, it is a very false. But number two, if you don't mind, I'll say in agreement with how no one ever teaches us about money, mm. ever. We don't get lessons. We don't get knowledge. Well, who we don't should be? I'll say it should start at home. Mm -hmm. I am a strong believer that the best parent, every, I mean the best teacher everywhere is a parent mm. or guardian. The, the best school is home. Mm. Regardless of the schools we go out there, the best is at home and the best par uh, teacher is at home. So if your parents, for example, if you have a boy and girl, you're sending them to the shop, in most cases, it's the boy, even, even if they're younger, who gets the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when they go to the shop, it's the girl who is told to carry. Mm. After all, they are older. Yeah. So that's already a wrong, a wrong understanding. Mm. Because why are you then seemingly empowering one over the other? So you find the decisions around money, including owners of capital. Right. In many cases, owners of capital in this country, ideally, are the male mm. as opposed to the female. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, let me get to a question here on our SMS line. Hello, Joyce. I'm Hilda. I'm turning 21. I work, but I don't earn much. And I want to save money for my two-month-old son and still want to go back to school and at least do human resources. How do I go about it? I have thought of getting a scholarship and it's hard. Yeah. Now, Sharon, I, I can see by your face, you sort of empathize with this young yeah. lady. Um, in many ways, you're almost at the same age in life, uh, mm -hmm. same point, you know, you're just about to finish school. She's yeah. wanting to go to school, but also has a young son. Um, what would, from your perspective, what mm -hmm. would you advise her to do? Um, first thing is prioritize. I feel like when you get to a point, like he said, first remove the emotional point from it and realize that there are responsibilities that need to be taken care of. First is the son, then you have one to go back to school. So which one do you want to start with first, right? Um, and this comes into now budgeting. Mm. You know you earn this amount of money. You have to get to a point where you're sacrificing and saying, hey, I need to put away a certain amount of money every single month to attain a certain goal by the end of a certain period. Because right. if you're not planning, you don't know, like he said, you don't know what's coming in and sure. what's going out. And then you're blinded and by mid-month you're like, ah, it's not, it's well, not I, I, making sense. I really sense, like yeah? what you're saying, that we need to plan. So even if you're not doing it now, now start planning for it. Just start now. Because mm. the thing about even being risk averse as a woman or as, um, as a man is that you need to learn how to compartmentalize every single thing. Mm -hmm. Like she already has an amazing idea. I like the fact that she was like, I'm thinking of getting a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Like we said, don't start with the money in mind. Think of any other solution that could take away the money right. from the equation. If you can get a scholarship, then you don't have to actually save up for this um, particular um, diploma you want to do or degree. Right. That will take away that headache. Okay. Then, even while you're still in the scholarship, plan how you're going to spend your money. Put away a certain amount. And by the time that you want to get something for your son or help your son out in any type of way, You'll you won't have, have to take out too much from sure. whatever you're receiving. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Man, my time is up. <laughs> I have to I have to wind up right now. But Sharon, David, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your insights. This has been an interesting discussion. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have been challenged with the way you think and perceive money. Wanawake tuwache kukwa excellent savers. Let's also start, you know, 
taking the emotions out of investing and out of money as David has pointed out and get out there so Sharon to Konaka challenge yeah. Yeah. somewhere somewhere up <laughs> <We're getting back. laughs> all right guys we're going to take a short break we need to bring in our couch as we get ready for our second hour this is full circle with Joyce I'm going to be reading more of your feedback when we come back stay tuned <laughs> 